Well, it was the 1950s, and there was a neighborhood of Catholics. And they loved being together and practicing the faith together. But a family of Lutherans moved in. And they would cook steak on Fridays. <laughs> and the neighborhood was outraged. So they had a meeting about this and explored what they should do. And they decided they must convert them. <laughs> we doing okay with our sound? I know. We, can we give our AV team some love this one? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So they decided they must convert them. And they went and knocked on the Lutheran's family door and had a conversation. Lutheran is not that far away from being Catholic. The Lutheran family asked what they could do to convert. And so the Catholics said it would just be a simple baptism ritual and they would have to practice the faith, which was explained and included not eating steak on Friday. So they agreed to convert. So the family gathered around and the Catholics sprinkled a few drops of water and said, you were born a Lutheran, you were raised a Lutheran, now you're a Catholic. Now the whole neighborhood could relax and know that everyone was on the same page. And so Friday rolled around and the smell of cooking steak was seeping into the air coming from the converted Lutherans. And some of the Catholic neighbors peered over their fence and this is what they saw. The converted Lutheran dad was sprinkling little drops of water on the steak, <laughs> cooking on the grill, saying, you were born a cow, you were raised a cow, now you are a fish. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how that worked in the long run. So today I'm continuing on this conversation, if you were here last week, about do you love your life? That was the question of the hour last week. Do you love your life? And to notice within the first 30 seconds what your response is. And it's okay, whatever it is. Because when I was looking at that this week, it just feels like life is calling us to understand what motivates our choices? Because out of the choices we make, I believe that's how, why we step back and we look at what we've created and go, hmm, I don't know if I love my life or not. So why are we doing what we're doing, living the life we're living? Why do we do what we do and want what we want? So there's a story of two fishermen fishing on the side of the river. And the older, more seasoned one catches big fish, measures them, and then throws them back in. And the younger fisherman asks, why? And the older fisherman says, because they won't fit in my pan. <laughs> so I thought this was a great example of how we limit our good and make decisions from our limitations instead of possibility. All right. Because it won't fit when I get a bigger pan. So why? Our motivation and our willingness to live fully and to receive our good. What is your why? Why are you living the life you're living? And sometimes I wonder if, if it's maybe just the alternative to, maybe it's not exactly what we want, but it's okay. Getting through the day maybe sometimes. Is it the strive to survive or the thrill of being fulfilled? What is it for us? Because this is what I believe. I really believe that the life essence that we are, and it's what we are, its nature is forward movement. Its nature is expansion. So what is your life calling you toward? 
And I was reminded of Jesus and his Sermon on the Mount. Because I think sometimes we don't choose from that expansive life energy presence that we are because I think we're just afraid. And so this is what Jesus said from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap <clears throat> nor gather into barns, and yet they are fed. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toll nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. Therefore, do not worry, O oh, you of little faith. What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? But strive first for the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you. You of little faith. So, sometimes we're afraid. And I think that we choose sometimes because of just what's right in front of us. This will do. Instead of really living from our knowing. Oh, you of little knowing. See, I think faith is our faculty of knowing and claiming. And there's another Bible story that I just had to share with you, and I'm sure you've heard of it, but it's just one of my favorites. So Jesus is out speaking to people, and he's tired. And he goes up into the mountain to pray. And he sends the disciples off into the boat to meet him on the other side. And all of a sudden, there's this big storm. And the disciples are just mortified. They're so afraid. And all of a sudden, they see Jesus walking toward them on the water. And Peter's like, whoa. <laughs> so Jesus, if you command me to walk toward you, I'll do it. I'm improvising. <laughs> and so Peter's like, OK, I'm going to do this. Because you know, Peter metaphysically represents faith. And so Peter steps out of the boat, and he starts to walk. And then all of a sudden, and he's doing really good, but all of a sudden he starts to really look at, holy crap. <laughs> and he starts to sink. Yeah, you've heard the story. But I love that story. Because I think that's what happens when we start to make choices. We can get in tune in our meditation where we get really empowered to say yes to something. And then all of a sudden we look out and we see the circumstances and we see how big it can actually be. And we start to sink, maybe lose our footing. We start to just step away or just move out of our alignment with the knowing that we are. Because I assert that there's always a knowing within each of us called faith, our faith faculty. And what is ours to do is to access that and to step into that. And that's why I love spiritual community so much. Because this is a place that not only for these beautiful eight people, for all of us to be able to come and walk in that door on whatever we're up to in our life, our why. I, I'm doing this because I just can't not. That a spiritual community will support you. They'll see you beyond any circumstance. So when we look at why we've made some decisions in our life, have you ever, people have said, what are you doing? Especially if you've stepped outside the dots a little bit. And maybe people in your life are like, why in the world are you doing that? And you go, I just can't not. 
Can anyone relate? I remember, many of you know, I was a flight attendant for about 11 years. And for many people, that job is like, oh, it's so cool. And it was cool, until it wasn't. And I mean, I loved it. It was great, it was expansive, but, but you know, I remember it was, it was a day when I just thought, this is no longer mine to do. And so I went to my supervisor and all my friends were like, what are you doing? What are you gonna do? Why are you doing that? And I said, I just can't not. I'm ready. I know that there's something greater for me. You know, why did I go to ministerial school and I had a beautiful life in Northern Virginia? I had a beautiful life, a full life. And last night, I went over to New World Unity, Unity Spiritual Center, the, the community that launched me, and celebrated the 20th anniversary with them. And it just rekindled, you know, the life that I had there and how beautiful it was. And it was really hard for me to leave because I felt so loved up and so supported. But I had to answer life's call. I had to. So I think, you know, when we look at the why of why we do what we do, maybe it's because we just have to. And maybe it's because maybe we feel like we just need to survive and this is just the best thing we can get. But I just want to assert that whatever you choose to do from your knowing that it is yours to do, that the how will be revealed to you. You don't have to worry about that. And I know that's a big statement. How in the world am I gonna go to ministerial school and support myself for three years? And it was amazing how, and I know we've that whole Indiana Jones thing, but I, you know, when you step out, the bridge appears because it really does. And what it takes from us too is our faculty of will Charles Fillmore called it the determining factor. So whatever is yours to do, check in with why. Why is it yours to do? Is it because you just can't say no? I just invite you to stretch in your life and to know that you are absolutely supported and that once you get clear why you are doing something, and that motivation is because you can't just not. That how will be there for you. I promise you. Asking why is a good question for us in meditation to just get clear what's motivating us. So take a deep breath with me. So this week, I just invite you to spend some time in the quiet of your being and just ask yourself, why am I choosing what I'm choosing? Why am I choosing this job and this relationship? Is it for my greatest unfolding? And if I were to make another choice that could possibly be more in alignment with the truth of what I am, can I know that I know that I know that as I step out of that boat, and I'm not going to affirm a storm, but there could be some things that could, opportunities could arise to support us in just knowing the truth. Can you know that the how will be taken care of as you listen and move your feet? So this week I just invite you to spend some time in that reflection. And let's affirm the truth together. My why inspires and empowers me to be all I am here to be. Yes, it is.